Where do I get the best mortgage rate and the best ultimate terms when it comes to shopping for a loan? Derek Evans here. I'm a VA home loan specialist, NMLS 155010 with Align Mortgage of California. Ultimately, our bank is American Pacific Mortgage. So a couple things. First of all, if you have not, if you're not sure if you should refinance yet, I made a video. Go check it out. When should I refinance my mortgage? I break down exactly how to do the calculations, exactly how to determine if that's something that you should even do. If you have already determined that you should refinance, then here's the things that you need to know specifically. First of all, <clears throat> what questions do you ask? You know, a lot of people know to ask what's the interest rate, but what about more from there? First of all, understand the mindset. You're, you're dealing with salespeople, regardless. Even if you call one of the big box companies and you're gonna get a call center somewhere, that person is a salesperson and they're on commission. I'm also a salesperson who's on commission, so just remember that the salespeople that you're dealing with, <clears throat> different people will sell in different ways. Many people will do hard sale techniques. Many people will try to push you and do different things like that. So just know, hey, this is what I'm getting into. I'm dealing with a salesperson, so you need to keep that in mind. That, do, that means that you just can't necessarily trust every single thing that's being said. Unfortunately, that's a reality, so just, just know that you're dealing with salespeople, okay? The question that everyone knows to ask, what's the interest rate? What are rates? What are rates? What are rates? People can ask that. Everyone knows to ask that. Here's the question you really should ask. What's the note rate? And some people will say, well, tell me the APR. Tell me the APR. APRs can be fudged just like anything else. So what I'm going to tell you to do is how to ask the questions for the information that will actually allow you to compare and see if you're getting a good deal. What is the note rate? Is this rate fixed for 30 years, especially for my VA friends out there and veterans who are trying to get a refinance right now what they really should be? Um, a lot of people are in the fours and stuff like that, and rates are down to twos. You could save a lot of money. Make sure it's a fixed rate for 30 years. Don't say, is it a fixed rate? Because they can answer yes, even if it's an adjustable because it's fixed for a certain period of time. Ask, is this rate fixed for 30 years? And if you want to do a 29, 28, 27, or 26, or 25 year amortization because you've already paid a few years into your loan, you can do that with the VA. It's really cool. Um, but just know that that's something that you want to ask. How much are your lender or broker fees? This is important to ask because a lot of people won't know if they're working with a broker or a bank. A lot of people will think they're working with a bank, they're working with a broker. Or they may think they're working with a broker, they're working with a bank. So you have to ask both questions. How much are the lender fees and how much are broker fees? If they say, well, there's no broker fee, we're not a broker. Okay, how much are your lender fees? What's great about my company is we don't have any lender fees. Um, for the loans that I focus on, the VA loans. So a lot of companies will. If they're a broker, they may say, oh, well, the bank's going to charge you a fee. They try to deflect it from the, well, the bank's charging a fee. You're connecting me with the bank, so you're charging me a fee. Are you also charging me a fee is the question. Are there any points? Okay, so now we've confirmed what the note rate we're being offered is. We've determined that it's actually fixed rate for 30 years. We've now got information about the lender and broker fees. So how much is are we being charged just from the lender and the people involved with connecting us with the lender for using a broker, how much are they charging us? And then we need to know, are there any points? Okay, and this is important because there's two different kinds of points. And if you just say, are there any points? Um, you know, people can deflect these points in different ways. But there's two different kinds of points. So you need to ask about both, okay? There's discount points, there's origination points. Um, we don't charge any points where I'm at, so it's very easy to do this, but a lot of banks do, especially credit unions, big banks. Brokers will charge points as well sometimes. Discount points are legitimate. They're bona fide. Since Dodd-Frank and CFPB have essentially overhauled the mortgage industry, discount points have to be bona fide. What that means is that they have to be legitimately used toward paying down and buying a lower interest rate. If you can pay discount points to get a lower interest rate, they should be directly correlated in your closing information. Origination points are points that are profit points. Those are points that are charged by the bank because the bank is trying to make money. And so not only will they charge you sometimes lender and broker fees, but they also charge you an origination fee as well. They have the right to do that. Um, it is totally legal to do, but I think it's completely unnecessary and actual bullshit. So you should not have to pay any origination points you may have to pay discount points if you choose to buy your rate down from the par rate, which is the rate which there are no points. But if you're doing that, chances are that you're either with a company that is overcharging you to get a rate that you shouldn't have to pay for, um, or it's the case that you're working with someone who's really savvy, 
And I have savvy clients all the time who say, hey, 2.75 is the par rate, but now I want to get 2.25. Okay, well then you can pay points for that and I'll show you how to do it. And we'll do the math and see if it makes sense. So these are the specific questions you need to ask, take notes on for every single lender that you talk to about your refinance. Get the information, details on every single one of these items. If they don't know the answers, hang up the phone. If they try to tiptoe around the answers, hang up the phone. Just hang it up. Click. Bye-bye. Don't answer their calls ever again. You do not want to deal with someone shady when you're getting a mortgage. Okay. <clears throat> well, then who do I call? There, I haven't even gotten there yet. I don't know who I should even shop around with. Um, you can go online, but just know that most of the stuff you're trying to search on Google has been manipulated significantly, especially in the mortgage industry. You're going to find a website that says bestlendersinthecountry.com or something like that. And it's really a website that's run by some big bank or some other mortgage company or something. And they're just trying to make it look like it's a, a, a site to help you. But really, they're trying to point you in some certain direction. This happens a lot with VA loans as well. Please don't just search Google. Get referrals from friends. Talk to your friends. Ask them these questions. Have you, you know, did you use someone? Um, did they charge you points? Were they easy to get a hold of? Did you have a good experience? Do you feel like you got a good deal? Just the normal questions you would ask. Get some referrals from friends. This is a great way to go about this. If you don't know anyone yourself to call, get some referrals. Um, use a more local company. You're much less likely to get ripped off. If a company is local and knows that you can show up on their doorstep with you if you feel like it, either with you know flowers or a shotgun, then they're much more likely to treat you well. So it's, it's, it's smart to use a local company for a lot of reasons. We talk about buying local and you know keeping your money local and all that. There's a whole bunch of reasons why that's a good thing. But also the accountability aspect is really, really crucial. Avoid companies that are too big. Um, the big banks, you know, big credit unions, um, some of the really, really, really big mortgage companies that are running ads on national TV and stuff like that. You're gonna to wanna to avoid these companies for the most part. Um, there's a huge corporate structure there. You're, you could get passed around to a bunch of different people. People are coming and going from those companies all the time. Um, I've just heard a tremendous amount of really, really bad feedback on that. So just be careful. I would say avoid them, but be careful if you're gonna go that direction. Avoid anyone who seems to be pushing you. If someone is not paying attention to where you are at with this, and they're really just focused on their own agenda, which is to get you to the next milestone in their timeline, and they're pushing you to do that, just get out of the dodge. Just say, you know what? I don't think it's gonna be a good fit. Thank you so much for your time, and hang up the phone. It's to totally okay to do that. Um, if someone is being pushy with you, um, this is not a good sign, okay? Because what happens when you have a difficult situation down the line in this refinance, and you know all of a sudden they're, they're, you find them pushing you again in a certain direction, you're going, hmm, I wonder what's the other way? And so just avoid that if you can. And if anyone dodges your questions, just hang up on them. If you ask someone one of these questions I've told you to ask, hey, what's, how much is the points? How much are discount? How much are origination points? What are your lender fees? And they go, well, first of all, you know, before we get to that, let's talk about this. Shut up. Hang up the phone. If they do that, it's a sales tactic. It tells you that this is someone who's not only a salesperson, which we already established, we all are, not only a salesperson, but there's someone who's trying to sell you on something and they don't want to answer your questions. That's not their priority. And if that's the case, then they do not deserve your business, in my opinion. Okay, so then how do you compare? Let's say I found two or three companies here and I'm, I'm, I'm willing to get a quote from these two or three companies, whether they're referrals or I found one online, got referred by one, and then this is someone that we used years ago. Okay, cool. How do I compare them? Well, first of all, narrow it down. Narrow down the list as much as you can. Who do we have a good feeling about? Who has good reviews online? Who um, took forever to call us back? See if you can initially narrow it down before you even get to terms based on just, you know, pure normalcy. Um, were these people easy to reach? Was it hard to get a hold of them? Did they seem like they knew what they were talking about? Were they discombobulated? Get rid of those people first, okay? Because sometimes those companies that are the biggest mess will tell the biggest lies and they'll get, get themselves in the running by telling you they can get you terms they really can't do. All right, next thing, ask for the same quote terms from each company in the running. So if you have two or three companies that are in the running, tell them you know, all that, hey, I want your best par rate, um, or I want your best rate with one point, or give me your best rate 
with no fees at all. I want to pay no fees, no discount, no lender fees, no nothing. Give me your best rate with no fees. This way you can compare apples to apples. It gets really difficult when you try to compare different companies because you'll just look at the note rate. That's what you'll look at and you'll go, well, this one's lower. They have more fees, but the rate's lower. And what you have to really compare apples to apples and see which one is the cheapest one ultimately. Now, if one of them is the lowest rate, let's say at 2.75 and the other ones are at 2.875 and 3% and they all have different fee structures, then just simply ask them, you know, hey, which, you know, what is your fee structure for a 2.75? And just get the same quote from each one of them at 2.75, what are my fees? That way you can actually compare. Notice flexibility and willingness. A, an individual, whether it's a, you know, a company or a small brand or whatever, if they are flexible to you and if they are willing to work with you and willing to listen to you, this means that their heart is in the right place. And this is the most important thing. Do they actually care about giving me what I want here? Or are they just trying to shove me into the box where they want me so they can make the most money? And if you notice their flexibility and willingness to work with you and to send you the things that you've requested and to answer your questions and to be available when you're ready and to not push you into doing things, but to say, hey, when you're ready to move forward, here's what the next step is. If you notice that, really give them a lot of points for that because that means that their heart is in the right place. Watch out for angling. You'll notice that people will sometimes angle and they'll say things like, you know, you really should do this or, you know, you should do it this way. If you notice that they're angling you as opposed to saying, you know, if you have a long-term outlook, then I would do this. If you have a short-term outlook, then I would do that. That is actual advice. But when someone says, you know, what you should do is this, or, you know, the smart thing to do is this, um, without really having asked any questions, they're really angling you. So just be careful if you happen to notice that. And if they dodge your questions again, just hang up the phone. Don't give them a second chance. Hell with that. They do not deserve your business. This is too big of a deal. If they aren't willing to at least answer your questions, then they can GTFO. All right, today's reminders, click to add title. <laughs> I don't know why that's there, that's weird. All right, let's jump in. Today, why is that there? Interesting. So um, today's reminders, let's take a look at this. Yeah, that's interesting. Rate is an important question, but fees factor in, so don't forget the lender fees question. So many people when they're shopping, they come to me and they say, okay, I've talked to two lenders already, and I start asking the question, okay, how much are the lender fees? They're like, oh, I don't know, I didn't ask that. You've got to ask the lender fees question. It's a big deal, it adds up, it factors in significantly, and most lenders will hide this from you. You call them and you'll say, what's your rate? They'll say, 2.75, because you didn't ask what the fees were. So they just told you the rate. You've got to ask all the questions. Points is a big one. They will want to disguise this in many ways. So ask for everything in writing. Don't just have a phone conversation. Whenever you have a phone call and someone gives you the quote over the phone, ask them to memorialize that conversation by sending you an email with the details. Okay, that's important. You want to get a quote. And. Mortgage inquiries are not going to harm your credit score. I made a video on this one as well, which uh, I will link in this video, as well as the other video I'm, uh, I'm going to link here. So mortgage inquiries are not gonna harm your credit score, so feel free to shop around. You can shop around for your mortgage. Um, mortgage inquiries are now omitted from the credit scoring model, an algorithm for FICO, which is what's used for mortgage. So you do not have to worry about getting hard inquiry dings and hurting your credit through the process of finding the best mortgage. Super, super cool. If you have questions, you'd like to get started with an application, you can always go to DerekEvans.com. If you have questions about you know, specific situations and you'd like to chat with me, you can call or text me at that number there. You can email me at that email address and you can always reference my NMLS number if you'd like to look me up and you know see uh, what's going on with me. If you just Google my name, you'll find my reviews through BirdEye. Um, those are actual clients who've worked with me before and uh, you can find out what people are saying about working with me. For the sake of disclaimers, I'm going to put this disclaimer up here for Equal Housing Opportunity, Line Mortgage, our location, and we're a division of American Pacific Mortgage, so I wanna put that stuff up here as well. But the bottom line is this. There's a lot of money that can be saved right now by refinancing. There's also a lot of people who are getting taken to the cleaners every single day, getting absolutely ripped off, ripped off. 
I focus on helping veterans because I know that they have my back or have had my back at some point. It's time for me to have theirs. And so I focus on trying to help keep veterans from getting ripped off, which happens way, way, way too often, especially in the mortgage industry, drives me nuts. So if you know a veteran who's looking for a home loan, you want to send them to a safe place where they're going to get a good deal and not pay any bullshit fees, you know where to send them. Thank you so much for your time today, guys. Share this video. Let's help make everybody smart.